Chapter 91 Meeting the Teacher You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Madame Zhao placed her hand on his chest. He covered the back of her hand, and she felt the warmth of his palm. Under her palm, she also felt Su Sanlang's beating heart. Everything was real. Madame Zhao couldn't help but smile. How nice. On the third day of the new year. Zhou Heng asked Su Chong and Su Hua to memorize the thousand character classic while he taught Su Xiaoling how to read. Chen Dania and Chen Erniu didn't come today. After Su Chong and Su Hua recited it a few times, Zhou Heng also began to receive acupuncture. After the acupuncture, it was time to practice walking. After a night of recovery, his legs no longer hurt, and he pushed himself up with both hands on both poles. There was a pain in his feet, but it was bearable. It seemed better than yesterday and the day before. He gritted his teeth, pursed his lips, and walked slowly. After one round, he felt the pain double. After two rounds, his legs trembled. The pain stayed. After three rounds, he was sweating profusely. He sat on the wooden wheelchair and took a long breath. When he calmed down, he looked at the concerned Su family and smiled warmly. I persevered. Every day was like torture, but he insisted on walking through it. Su Xiaoling's eyes were gentle as she said gently, Little Brother Hung is the best. We should learn from Little Brother Hang, his tenacious spirit. Su Hua said seriously. He and Su Chong looked at Zhou Heng with admiration in their eyes. They treated Zhou Heng as someone to motivate them. Zhou Heng smiled. It was your encouragement that kept me going. No one could understand how painful it was to train every day and walk with his feet on the ground. The fact that he could stand up again meant that he had to practically rebuild his legs. After sending Zhou Heng back to his room, Su Xiaolu came to remove the ointment. After she was done, Su Xiaoling massaged him while Su Xiaolu went to brew the medicine again. After sending Zhou Heng back to his room, Su Chong and Su Hua went to the fields to help Su Sanlang and Madame Zhao. The two children were kind-hearted. Su Sanlang and Madame Zhao had said that they did not need their help, and they still stubbornly helped. Su Hua had even seriously convinced Su Sanlang that they were farmers and common people. Studying was to understand the world and everything in it, so working was also beneficial to studying. Listening to Su Hua's grand reasoning, Su Sanlang felt relieved and let them be. He felt that Su Hua was right, he didn't let the two children do farm work because he was worried that it would distract them from studying. Since all the students wouldn't go to the fields anymore after going to school, Su Sanlang didn't intend to keep Su Chong and Su Hua busy with farming. However, in his heart, Su Sanlang felt that even if they studied, they should go to the fields to farm. After all, farming was human nature. They should know when to plant, when to weed, when to fertilize, when to harvest, and when the seasons change. Su Chong and Su Hua were interested in learning and still retained their precious curious nature. Su Sanlang was very happy, so he didn't say anything else about not working. Seeing that his two sons were here, Su Sanlang asked them to help Madame Zhao and let her rest. After cleaning up the land for a day, Madame Zhao went home to cook in the afternoon. When it was dark and the food was ready, Su Sanlang brought Su Chong and Su Hua home. At night, Madame Zhao boiled hot water and let Su Sanlang, Su Chong, and Su Hua wash up properly. They were going to school tomorrow, so of course, they had to clean themselves up. Su Chong and Su Hua were thinking about going to school tomorrow, but they were also thinking about who would carry Zhou Hang back to his room tomorrow. So after breakfast the next day, when Su Sanlang was ready to take Su Chong and Su Hua to school, neither of them wanted to leave. Su Sanlang asked with concern, what's wrong? Why aren't you happy to go see the teacher? Su Chong and Su Hua looked at each other. Su Chong said, Dad, can Hua and I come back at noon today? How would little brother Hang go back to his room after practicing walking? Third sister and Xiaolu can't carry the wooden wheelchair. So that was what they were worried about, Su San Lang thought. He smiled gently and said, Your mother will be at home today. Don't worry. Zhou Hang also said gently, Ah, uh, Chong An, Ah, uh, Hua, don't worry. Don't worry about me. 
Old Wu coughed and said, don't you still have me? He was a little old, but it was not to the extent that he could not even carry a child. Besides, he had brought Zhou Hang from the capital last year. Who knew how long he had carried him? Su Chong and Su Hua were relieved and followed Su San Lang out the door. This was Su Chong and Su Hua's first visit to another village. Octagon Village was two mountains away from Southern Mountain Village. It took two hours to walk there. It was also Su San Lang's first time there. He brought Su Chong and Su Hua to ask for directions a few times before arriving at teacher Zhao Shoren's house in Octagon Village's school. Zhao Shoren was 46 years old and an elementary scholar. He had passed the elementary scholar examination at the age of 20, but had not been able to advance further after taking the examination for a few years. His parents had passed away, and his elder brother was unwilling to support him in his studies. After splitting up, Zhao Shoren had to bear the pressure of supporting his family. He gave up on studying and came to the neighboring villages to open a school. The school had been open for 20 years, and there were many children and elementary scholars. It was said that Zhao Shoren's best student had gone to the capital to become an official. Zhao Shoren emphasized etiquette and upbringing, so one could not be rude when one came to learn. Su San Lang had firmly memorized the information he had obtained, so last night, the father and sons had washed up properly. Today, they came here clean. Before knocking on the door, Su San Lang even specially tidied up Su Chong and Su Hua's clothes. After making sure there was no problem, Su San Lang raised his hand and knocked. Soon, a woman's voice came from the courtyard. Who is it? The door came quickly. The woman looked at Su San Lang and his sons and stepped aside. You're here to study, right? Please come in. My husband is having tea in the house. Su San Lang understood the woman's identity. He nodded slightly and said gently, Thank you for leading the way, madam. Mrs. Zhao smiled and led the way for Su San Lang and his sons. The Zhao family's house was well dot built. There were flowers and trees on both sides of the courtyard. They were paved with limestone and looked very cultured. Mrs. Zhao was dressed elegantly. Her fingernails were bright red and it was unknown what she had applied. Su San Lang took one look at it and didn't look at it again. They said the literati were elegant. After seeing it today, he thought that was true, but he still thought it was a pity that they didn't use the yard to grow vegetables. Su Chong and Su Hua followed Su San Lang obediently, not looking around or curious. Mrs. Zhao had a good impression of Su San Lang and the kids. After entering the main room, Mrs. Zhao said to Zhao Shorin, who was drinking tea, you guys go ahead. I'll go make tea. Zhao Shorin nodded. He said calmly to Su San Lang, are you registering for these two children? They don't look young anymore. Why did you suddenly think of sending them here? Chapter 92 Scar You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Zhao Shorin looked at Su Chong and Su Hua. No matter how he looked at them, they were already in their teens. Under normal circumstances, it was impossible for such an old child to be sent here to learn. After all, at such an age, they should already be married. Su San Lang said, I want my two children to enter school. Their mental illnesses were cured recently, so they want them to come to school to learn how to read. Zhao Shoren finished sizing up Su Chong and Su Hua. Hearing Su San Lang's neither servile nor overbearing tone, his gaze landed on Su San Lang. One of Su San Lang's eyes was wrapped in gray cloth. Zhao Shoren frowned. He looked at Su San Lang and said, A few years ago, I heard that a family cut ties with their parents. Later, they went into the mountains and killed a big tiger. They went blind in one eye. It seemed that there were two sons with mental disabilities in the family. Is that your family? Three years ago, news of Su San Lang killing a tiger had spread far and wide. Zhao Shoren had also heard about it and heard a few things about Su San Lang's family. But that was someone else's business and had nothing to do with him. Now that Su San Lang had come to his house, Zhao Shoren felt the need to ask him about it. He did not want the child of someone who did not understand filial piety and disregard his parents' kindness to learn from him, 
Su San Lang didn't know why Zhao Shoren asked this. He looked at Zhao Shoren and nodded without hiding anything. Yes, that's me. I'm Su San Lang. Zhao Shoren frowned. Why did you cut ties with your parents? Can you tell me the reason in detail? Su San Lang frowned slightly. He said, Teacher Zhao, this is my family matter. I just brought the children to ask if they could enroll. I can guarantee that they're all good and obedient children. They won't give teacher any trouble. Su San Lang, if you can't explain why, then please forgive me for not being able to accept your two sons as students. Please leave. When Su San Lang refused to say anything, Zhao Shoren's attitude became much colder. He had heard that Su San Lang had caused such a scene because of a woman. What kind of good children could such a person give birth to? Father, let's go back. I don't want to learn from such a teacher. Su Hua tugged at Su San Lang's sleeve and whispered. This was the first time he had met the teacher, but the teacher was completely different from what little brother Hang had described. The teacher didn't test him on his knowledge. He only asked him about his family. He remembered that part of the past. It was a scar on their family. However, the knowledgeable teacher Zhao didn't avoid talking about it and even forced them to expose it. This wasn't good at all. He didn't want to learn from him. Su Chong also pulled Su Sanlang's hand and said, Father, I don't want to learn from him either. Two ignorant children actually dared to say that. Zhao Shoren's expression immediately turned ugly. He snorted and said, Please leave. My temple is small and can't accommodate you too. Su San Lang held Su Chong and Su Hua's hands. He swallowed and paused before asking Zhao Shoren, Master Zhao, I ended my relationship with my parents back then because my family wanted to live. I wanted them to be able to eat well and wear warm clothes. I don't want to elaborate on the reason behind this. Others can never empathize with my experience from just a few words. I don't regret my decision that day, and I never will. Su San Lang hoped that Teacher Zhao would accept Su Chong and Su Hua. He didn't want to talk about the past, but when he thought of his two sons, he still explained a little. Zhao Shoren was also a parent. He felt that if he said this, Zhao Shoren should understand. Zhao Shoren looked at Su San Lang coldly and snorted. When I take in students, I value filial piety the most. It seems that you haven't repented in the past few years. You didn't consider that they were the parents who gave birth to you and raised you. You're a person without filial piety. I won't take in your children either. You can leave. News of Su San Lang leaving the family and abandoning his parents spread far and wide. Zhao Shoren taught, and Su Qing and Su Shun studied at the school. They often said bad things about Su San Lang's family. Before Su San Lang's family knew about it, the school had already used their family as a bad example. Now that Su San Lang was bringing his two sons to school, Zhao Shoren naturally had to lecture them. He did not expect them to be so unrepentant. Such people actually wanted to enter the school. They were really dreaming. When Mrs. Zhao came with the tea, she realized that the atmosphere was not right. She could not help but frown and look at Su San Lang and his son. She wanted to ask but did not. Su Hua and Su Chong tugged at Su San Lang's hand. Su San Lang's right eye was slightly red. He held his two sons' hands tightly. Finally, he said in a low and hoarse voice, let's go home. He took Su Chong and Su Hua out and left decisively. Mrs. Zhao followed them out. She sighed and did not say anything in the end. Su San Lang let out a long sigh as he looked at the closed door of the Zhao residence. His throat felt constricted. Su Chong and Su Hua also looked a little worried. The two of them leaned tightly against Su San Lang. Su Hua said, Father, don't be sad. It doesn't matter if Big Brother and I don't go to school. Su Chong nodded in agreement. Yes, yes. I've already learned a lot from Little Brother Hung. Su San Lang sighed. He let go of Su Chong and Su Hua's hands and reached out to stroke their hair. He sighed. Let's go home. 
He'd never thought that doing what he thought was right would have so much consequence, looking at his two healthy sons, their eyes were no longer blank with the previously uncomprehending ignorance. They were now full of spirit. He would never regret going down the path he did. Even if everyone in the world thought he was wrong, he wouldn't think so. He sighed at the coldness of the world. On the way back, he no longer felt the excitement he did on the way here. When they returned home, Zhou Hang was practicing walking. The unhappiness in Su Chong and Su Hua's hearts instantly dissipated. They entered the house and went to Zhou Hang's side to encourage him. Su San Lang returned to his room in low spirits. Madame Zhao immediately noticed his abnormality and quickly followed him. Old Wu could also tell that something was wrong with Su San Lang. However, he did not have the time to care so much. Now that Su Chong and Su Hua were back, he did not need to take care of Zhou Heng anymore. He went to see how the medicine was brewing. After Old Wu left, Zhou Heng stopped to rest for a while. He smiled at Su Chong and Su Hua and asked with concern, Ah, uh, Chong, Ah, uh, Hua, how was your visit today? When will you start school? Su Chong and Su Hua looked a little down and instantly dimmed. The two of them looked at each other as if they didn't know what to say. Zhou Hang was a little worried. What's wrong? Su Xiaoling and Su Xiaolu also looked at Su Chong and Su Hua with worry. Su Chong said in disappointment, teacher is not good at all. He asked father why he was not filial. He said that he refused to accept people who were not filial. Zhou Hang frowned and gritted his teeth. Foolish. Zhou Hang was furious. Teacher Zhao's words undoubtedly hurt Su Chong and Su Hua's will. If they did not think it through, they would really think that they were in the wrong. When they grew up, they might even blame Su San Lang for doing what he did. Chapter 93 No Matter You are listening to the novel at FameTV.com Ah, uh, Chong, Ah, uh, Hua, such a foolish person is not worthy of being a teacher. That's why he will always be just a scholar. Don't listen to or believe what he says. An incompetent person can't teach you how to fly. It's better not to have such a teacher. Zhou Hang was extremely determined. He looked at Su Chong and Su Hua and spurned Xiao Shoren firmly. He was determined to let Su Chong and Su Hua understand that they had never been wrong. Xiao Shoren was the one who was wrong. Thank you, little brother Hung. I understand. Su Hua smiled at Zhou Hang, and the low mood in his heart disappeared. He looked into Zhou Hang's determined eyes. Of course, Su Hua chose to believe in his little brother Hang. Little brother Hang is right. I don't want such a teacher. Su Chong also smiled and said to Zhou Hang. Zhou Hang nodded. He was relieved that Su Chong and Su Hua could get rid of the influence of teacher Zhao in time. Su Xiaolu didn't say anything. She just ran over and hugged Su Chong and Su Hua and kissed their cheeks. She hadn't realized how difficult it was for those who dared to break free of their moral shackles in these times. The only thing that did not change was that no matter how difficult it was, their family would always stick together. Brother Zhou Hang, you haven't finished walking yet. Hurry up and continue. Su Xiaolu urged Zhou Hang to continue training. Zhou Heng nodded and continued his cruel training of walking. Su Chong, Su Hua, and Su Xiaoling encouraged him. Inside the main room. Su Sanlang also told Madame Zhao about the matter. Madame Zhao cried when she heard about what had happened. She felt terrible, but she didn't know what to say. She just hugged Su Sanlang and sobbed silently. After a long while, Madame Zhao said in a choked voice, Sanlang, it's all right. It's enough for our family to be together. Su San Lang sighed. His heart was so heavy that even his words sounded heavy. I'm sorry. His words were weak and painful. Perhaps this was just the beginning. Su Chong and Su Hua's studies were not the only things affected. Their marriage would also be affected. Su San Lang's heart felt like it was being cut by a million knives. Madame Zhao seemed to understand his pain. She raised her head from Su Sanlang's arms and said, Sanlang, let's earn more money. 
In a few years, let's bring the children to another place. Let's go to a place where no one knows us, okay? What Su San Lang thought of, Madame Zhao also thought of as well. It was because of that pain that she had this thought. The Great Zhou Empire was so big, there must be a place where people did not know about their past family matters. There must be a place that could accommodate them. How good her Chong and Hua were. How obedient her daughters were. Their future should not be affected or destroyed. They should be able to find a good match and be happy for the rest of their lives. Su San Lang looked at Madame Zhao. He nodded and said hoarsely, okay. He had never wanted to leave his familiar hometown. His roots were here. However, if there was no room for him here, he wouldn't wait for his death here. He had tried so hard to break free from his shackles to live well, not to be destroyed. His sons had finally recovered and should not be treated badly anymore. Madame Zhao sighed softly. She was filled with melancholy, but no words could express how she felt. When the couple calmed down and came out of the room, Su Chong and Su Hua were carrying Zhou Hang's wooden wheelchair back to the house. Su Sanlang and Madame Zhao went to take a look. After confirming that they did not need any help, they went to the fields to work. After that, Su Chong and Su Hua's enrollment was never mentioned again. In March, Zhou Hang could already leave the wooden wheelchair and walk slowly. Every step he took was very slow, but he was getting better day by day. Zhou Hang could also feel that his legs were becoming more and more agile. He no longer felt the pain from when he first walked. Now, he only felt that his muscles were a little tense. Usually, he would teach Su Chong and Su Hua the three-character classic and the Tao Te Ching. In addition to the meaning that he learned from the imperial tutor, he also taught Su Chong and Su Hua some of his own inferences. Su Chong and Su Hua studied seriously. The two of them also had very complex thoughts. Zhou Heng always felt that Su Hua was talented and intelligent, and it was a pity. He felt that Su Sanlang's family should get out of here and go to a better place to make a future for Su Chong and Su Hua, but this thought was dispelled several times. He knew perfectly well that he could not impose his thoughts on others. Su Sanlang's family was not rich. They did not have a strong enough foundation. It was not easy for them to leave their hometown and go to an unfamiliar place. They needed to think this through carefully. March was the busy season for planting seeds, so Zhou Hang naturally followed them to the fields. Every day, they were busy farming and learning. These days, Zhou Hang felt very happy and fulfilled. Since he was walking to the fields, except for daily acupuncture and medicine, his training was cancelled. After all, the path he walked was enough to substitute training. This spring, summer, and autumn were all very special to Zhou Hang. He had personally planted the seedlings and watched them grow day by day, bear fruits, and finally harvest. When winter came, Zhou Hang had already recovered. Winter 11th was a special day because Zhou Hang was going to run around today. The four-year-old Su Xiaolu was very cute. She was already a junior doctor. She put away the needle and said seriously, Now, I announce that brother Zhou Heng has completely recovered. He will be fine even if he runs many laps. His legs are even healthier than before. Now, when I count to three, brother Zhou Heng will run three laps around our house. In order to watch Su Xiaolu's plan, Su Sanlang's family waited neatly at the door to witness it. Zhou Heng was also very serious. Su Xiaolu held a carrot in her hand and counted, one, two, three, run. As soon as she finished counting, Zhou Hang ran out. Su Chong and Su Hua ran with him. Zhou Hang ran at the front with a smile on his lips. He could feel that his legs were healthy and energetic. He looked at Su Chong and Su Hua beside him and smiled. Su Chong had the best stamina. He did not pant when running like this. He even asked with a smile, Little brother Hung, how do you feel? Zhou Hang smiled and replied, I feel very good. Su Hua also smiled and said, Then let's compete and see who finishes the 10 laps first. Zhou Hang nodded. No problem. After circling the house, Su Xiaoling stood beside Su Sanlang and Madame Zhao and smiled gently at them. 
As for Su Xiaolu, she had tied her hair into two buns and was jumping around shouting, Big brother is the best. Brother Zhou Hang is the best, second brother is the best. The commotion in the Su family made Chen whose family come out to take a look. The youngest, Chen Shi, could already walk. He clapped his hands beside Madame Chen and shouted, Brother, you're the best. After ten laps, Su Chong and Su Hua slowed down and let the panting Zhou Heng finish first. Chapter 94 Complete Recovery You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. He had not run for a long time. Zhou Heng felt some pain in his lungs and the blood in his body was heating up. After running, he put his hands on his knees and panted. Su Sanlang and Madame Zhao quickly went up to him and asked with concern, How are you? Are you feeling unwell? Su Xiaoling handed him water. Here, have some water. Old Wu coughed. He's already gone up the mountain and into the fields. He's not so delicate. Delicate. That was in the past. Now, Zhou Hang was just an ordinary farmer's child. He knew everything. So what if he ran around? He could not be delicate. Zhou Hang smiled and said, Third uncle, third aunt, I'm fine. Don't worry. He took the water from Su Xiaoling and said softly, Thank you, Xiaoling, his legs hurt and he almost choked on the water. He looked down and saw Su Xiaolu hitting his legs with a small hammer. Zhou Hang was puzzled. Xiaolu, what are you doing? Su Xiaolu smiled and said, I'm making sure that your legs have really healed. Now I'm sure it's fine. Hehe, <laughs> what bad intentions could a young lady have? Su Xiaolu felt that Zhou Hang might like her third sister. Otherwise, why would he secretly give the drumstick to her third sister every time? They were both girls, but why didn't she get this treatment? Zhou Hang did not say it explicitly, and Su Xiaolu pretended not to notice. She was a doctor, so she could make up any excuse. So this year, Zhou Hang's medicine was sometimes super bitter and sometimes super smelly. Looking at the little girl's beautiful and lively eyes, Zhou Hang imitated Su Xiaoling and stroked Su Xiaolu's hair. He said gently, Thank you, Xiaolu. Su Xiaolu smiled. You're welcome. Su Chong and Su Hua had also recovered. Now that Zhou Hang had recovered, the Su family knew that perhaps they would have to part ways. Su Xiaolu began to observe Old Wu. After all, Zhou Hang was brought here by Old Wu. However, Old Wu did not do anything at all. He picked herbs and drank wine as if it had nothing to do with him whether Zhou Hang left or not. Zhou Hang, on the other hand, had to run more than 10 or 20 laps around his home every day. In early December, Madame Chen sent over many pickled vegetables, some spicy and some salty and sour. Madame Chen chatted with Madame Zhao with a smile. Su Xiaolu looked at the pickled vegetables and had a thought that she shouldn't have. She wanted to eat hot pot. Her memories of her previous life were a little blurry. Other than her Chinese medicine skills, she had forgotten most of them. She would only remember them occasionally. In the four years she had been here, Madame Zhao had never made pickled vegetables. Her family mainly fried and stewed food. Anyway, they tasted good, so she didn't think anything about it. She had almost forgotten that there was such a thing as pickled vegetables. Looking at it now, she thought of sauerkraut fish, spicy cabbage stew with stewed tofu, sauerkraut with pork, and sauerkraut with big bones. She felt greedy. Su Xiaolu had an idea. She ran to hug Madame Chen. She said sweetly, Auntie, you're so amazing. These look delicious. Can these be used to cook fish and meat? My mother has never made them before. Does she know how to make them? Madame Chen liked Su Xiaolu very much. Hearing Su Xiaolu's question, she looked at Madame Zhao in embarrassment. Sister. In. Law, why don't I cook for you tonight? Su Xiaolu had saved her life. In addition, Su Xiaolu was sensible and lively. The little girl often went to play with Chen Shi. She was fair and beautiful, and Madame Qian liked her very much. Madame Zhao smiled and nodded. Then let's do this. Let's eat at my house today. 
I didn't know that you could make these dishes before. Sister. And La, you're good at cooking. I'll help you today. What Madame Zhao usually made were dried vegetables. She had never made sauerkraut before. In the past, the Su family did not eat sauerkraut, so she did not think about this. But now, looking at Madame Qian's cooking and her greedy daughter, she felt that she could learn it. The two families were on good terms and often ate together during the holidays, so Madame Qian agreed. These pickles amazed Su Sanlang and Old Wu at night. Everyone really liked it. Hence, Madame Zhao asked Madame Qian for advice. She would later make them too. As Su Xiaolu ate, she suddenly said to Madame Qian, Auntie, I think you can sell these dishes in town. Those sold outside definitely won't be as delicious as the ones you make. This year, Chen Hu's family could eat their fill even if they only had a few acres of land. When the farm was busy, Chen Hu made a little money working in the town and they lived well, but it was not enough to live even better. Su Xiaolu had been to Goathorn Town and knew that there was almost everything in town. It was definitely impossible to do anything original, but in terms of taste, Madame Qian's cooking was definitely not bad. When Su Xiaolu said that, Su Chong and Su Hua nodded repeatedly. Chen Hu and Madame Qian did not take it to heart, but Madame Zhao and Madame Qian did. They decided to talk to Madame Chen Hu and Madame Qian in private. Since her family also liked pickles, Madame Zhao prepared to make pickles at home the next day. Since she was going to make them, she naturally had to buy jars. Hence, Su San Lang decided to go to town. Just then, Zhou Heng came out and said to Su San Lang, third uncle, I have something to do in town. Can you bring me there? Zhou Heng rarely asked for anything. Of course, Su San Lang agreed. After Su San Lang brought Zhou Heng out, Madame Zhao brought the children to pick vegetables. The vegetables that the Su family grew had always grown very well. The fields were fertile, and the vegetables were green and full of vitality. The radishes were also white and fat. Madame Zhao cherished these crops and often took care of them. Su Chong sighed. Madame Zhao couldn't help but smile. What's wrong, Chong? Why are you sighing? Su Xiaolu was the youngest, so she naturally did not need to pick the vegetables. She watched from outside and listened to her brother sigh. She looked over and sighed as well. Sigh. I know why big brother sighed. Madame Zhao was puzzled. Why? Even Su Xiaoling was curious. Su Chong said, I think little brother Hang is going home soon. Su Xiaolu also said, I saw big brother Zhou Hang writing a letter a few days ago. It should be a letter to his home. Zhou Hang had been here for more than a year. He had already recovered. Logically speaking, it was time for him to go back. Thinking about how knowledgeable he was and how he knew the thousand character classic at such a young age, Su Xiaolu guessed that he must have a noble status. There must be many reasons behind his inability to walk at such a young age. However, in any case, since he got better, it might be time for them to part. Old Wu was indifferent to this. Su Xiaolu figured that Zhou Hang did not need Old Wu to send him home. As for Old Wu, he could not be bothered with matters that had nothing to do with him. Madame Zhao paused for a moment before saying, Hang has been away from home for so long. It's time for him to go home. This is a good thing. It's a good thing, but we can't bear to let him go. We'll miss him. Su Chong said dejectedly. He and Hua had failed to enroll, and he wondered if Hang would ever write to them again. They were sensible now, and they did not ask about everything like they used to. They had learned to keep some questions to themselves. Chapter 95 Letter to Home You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Madame Zhao sighed. She smiled gently and said, I believe Hang will remember you too. After Su Chong and Su Hua recovered, Madame Zhao did not coax them like before. It was inevitable that people would feel many uncomfortable emotions as they grew up, whether they wanted to or not. However, the only thing that would not change was that no matter where you were, the person you missed would also miss you. Zhou Hang came to their house and lived with Su Chong and Su Hua. It was normal for them to feel reluctant to let him go. 
However, they treated Zhou Heng well, and they believed that Zhou Heng would not forget it. Big brother, second brother, don't be sad. Little brother Heng will also remember you. Perhaps he will come back to visit us in the future. Su Xiaoling said with a faint smile. Even though she felt a little sad, she still comforted Su Chong and Su Hua. Would Zhou Heng miss them when he got home? Perhaps he would. Perhaps he would forget it in a few years. But even so, she hoped he would be happy and not have so much on his mind. The knowledge he had taught them would never be forgotten in this lifetime. They would always be grateful to him. Su Xiaoling lowered her eyes and did not stop picking at the vegetables. She even sighed in her heart. Let's hope so. Su Hua said softly. He was very reluctant to let Zhou Heng go home. He understood that they might never meet again after this farewell. But he had to have hope. Su Xiaolu lowered her eyes silently. In fact, she knew better than Su Chong and Su Hua that the chances of seeing Zhou Heng again after he left were close to none. Su Xiaolu felt that it was time for her to do something for this family after studying medicine for so long. Big brother and second brother liked to learn and could not even enter school in the countryside. Su Sanlang had also gone to town to ask, but when he returned home, he was depressed, so obviously, they could not enter school there either. Su Chong and Su Hua admired Zhou Heng because he had knowledge and because they wanted to be like him. Su Xiaolu clenched her fists. She must let her brothers enter the school as they wished. There were some things that one would not want after waiting for a long time. She had to do it while they were still young and passionate. In the afternoon, when Old Wu returned from picking herbs, Su Xiaolu ran to Old Wu's side and worked hard. Master, can I ask a question? Su Xiaolu massaged his shoulders and back obsequiously. Old Wu glanced sideways and said calmly, I see you've been busy inside and out. Ask away. The little girl was quite thoughtful. It was obvious that she had something to ask of him. How could she hide her thoughts from him? Master, do you think I can treat a rich family? If I accidentally become famous, will you be unhappy? Su Xiaolu asked. After that, she added the reason for these questions, Master, I know you're afraid of trouble. I know you don't like it, but I want my eldest brother and second brother to study. Su Xiaolu had always respected her teacher. Since she learned Chinese medicine in her previous life, she paid a lot of attention to her manners. By proper etiquette, as a disciple, she could not treat difficult illnesses alone. Since there were many variables in difficult diseases, it might ruin the master's reputation if she acted alone. In this life, she had to follow those rules too. Before she finished her apprenticeship, she had to listen to her master. Even treating Zhou Heng, Su Chong, and Su Hua was approved by Old Wu. Old Wu sighed and reached out to stroke Su Xiaolu's hair. He said, girl, with your intelligence, you should be done with your apprenticeship in about a year. You're very smart, but you're never spoiled. I like your temperament, but you're right about one thing. I don't like trouble. But you're my disciple. All the rules can be changed for you. Go with me to the Sun Residence in Goathorn Town and make a consultation for the twins. Negotiate with them and don't make a fuss. I'll teach you for another year. After I leave next year, you can go alone. Thank you, Master. Su Xiaolu threw herself into Old Wu's arms and hugged this cold-faced but warm-hearted old man. Old Wu felt uncomfortable. He pushed away the soft little girl and said awkwardly, All right, all right. He was really afraid. Fortunately, he didn't have to teach her for many years. Otherwise, he would really have gone crazy. Women were indeed troublesome. They either wheedled or cried. He hated that. However, this was his favorite disciple. Su Xiaolu had achieved her goal. She was overjoyed and skipped out the door. Old Wu looked at the cheerful little figure and sighed. Su Sanlang and Zhou Heng returned. Su Sanlang bought three large jars and went to make pickled vegetables with Madame Zhao. Su Chong and Su Hua looked at Zhou Heng, feeling a little down. Su Xiaoling also seemed to have something to ask, but in the end, she didn't. 
Su Xiaolu did not seem to be scheming anything. She happily ate the candy Zhou Heng bought. Zhou Heng looked at Su Chong and Su Hua and finally said, Ah, uh, Chong, Ah, uh, Hua, Xiaoling, I have something to tell you. Su Chong and Su Hua's eyes lit up. Since Zhou Heng was willing to tell them, it meant that he also cared about them. The depression in their hearts was soothed. I'm well enough, so I wrote home to ask my mother if I could come home. I'm waiting for my mother to write back and send for me now. I didn't say this before because I wasn't sure when the response would come, but I was also afraid it would be too soon to say goodbye. Zhou Hang looked at Su Chong, Su Hua, and then at Su Xiaoling. He explained sincerely and seriously, hoping that Su Chong, Su Hua, and Su Xiaoling could understand his feelings. As for Su Xiaolu, the little girl was still happily eating candy. She shouldn't be sad. We will miss you, little brother Hung. Su Chong smiled at Zhou Hang and said. The disappointment and reluctance in his heart finally turned into blessings. Little brother Hang, thank you for teaching us so much. We will always remember you. Su Hua looked at Zhou Hang and thanked him sincerely. Su Xiaoling said nothing. She just smiled. Zhou Heng nodded and said, Me too. I'll always remember our days. He wanted to say that if he was going home, he would solve the problem of Su Chong and Su Hua not being able to read. That would be difficult for Su Sanlang's family, but it wasn't difficult for him. If he went back, he would solve the problem first. He wanted to say this news now, but after thinking about it, he held back. He wasn't sure when he could return, so he decided to wait and tell this to the Su family as a surprise. During dinner that night, Old Wu said, I'm going to take the little girl out in a few days to broaden her horizons. Su Sanlang and Madame Zhao looked at Su Xiaolu with heartache. Just as they were about to speak, Su Xiaolu spoke sweetly. She said, Father, Mother, don't worry. I'm very obedient. I definitely won't cause trouble for Master. Old Wu glanced at Su Xiaolu and said, Don't worry, I'll watch over her. I won't let her cause any trouble. Madame Zhao was not worried about this. She and Su Sanlang were worried that Su Xiaolu would miss home and cry if she left. Chapter 96 Going Out with Master You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Isn't it too tiring for Xiao Cha to follow the master everywhere? Su Sanlang's heart ached for her, but he didn't say it out loud as he looked at the obedient Su Xiaolu. After Su Xiaolu learned medicine, she would definitely have to suffer. No matter how much his heart ached for the child, he could not stop her from achieving new heights. Su Sanlang and Madame Zhao looked at each other and hid their heartache in their hearts. Su Sanlang nodded and said, All right, I'll leave Simei to you. After saying that, Su Sanlang looked at Su Xiaolu gently and said, Simei, you must listen to your master outside, understand. Madame Zhao stroked Su Xiaolu's hair gently. Father and mother will be waiting for you at home. Su Xiaolu nodded. She lowered her eyes to eat and did not let Su Sanlang and Madame Zhao see the tears in her eyes. At night, Madame Zhao sighed softly. Sanlang, I feel like something is twisting my heart. Sigh, Su San Lang was not asleep either. He reached out and pulled Madame Zhao into his arms. Me too, but it's good for Simei to learn more medical skills. In the future, with this ability, she won't have to worry about food and clothes. Even if she gets married, her husband's family will think highly of her. As parents, they did not have any skills to pass it on to their children. They felt very bad about that. Su Xiaolu learned medicine, which was a hard skill. If her husband's family did not treat her well in the future, she would be able to find another place to settle down in. She would not have to worry no matter where she went. All humans get sick, so doctors are sought after everywhere. He knew that Madame Zhao's heart ached for Su Xiaolu because she was still too young, and so did his. However, no matter how much his heart ached, he could only hide it in his heart. I know. Sigh, Madame Zhao's heart ached. In the end, all those words turned into a sigh. In a daze, Su Xiaolu felt herself being hugged and kissed on the forehead. She heard Su Xiaoling whispering, Xiaolu, you've been smart since you were young. 
I know you'll definitely be very successful in the future, but my heart still aches for you. Sigh, Su Xiaolu burrowed into Su Xiaoling's arms and continued to sleep soundly. Su Xiaoling patted Su Xiaolu's back before hugging her to sleep. The next day. After breakfast, Old Wu brought the medical kit and Su Xiaolu to town. Su Sanlang's family saw them out the door and watched them until they were out of sight. When the Su family was out of sight, Old Wu suddenly squatted down and said to Su Xiaolu calmly, Girl, come up. No matter how agile Su Xiaolu was, she was still a child. This trip was quite far. Her feet would probably swell up if she really walked on her own. Su Xiaolu looked at Old Wu's back and said hesitantly, Master, I'm quite heavy. In the past, every time she went to town, her father would carry her. When she came back, her mother or brother would carry her. They doted on her, and they were family. Su Xiaolu naturally enjoyed their kindness to her. But Old Wu was different. He was her teacher. It's not good to dawdle. Hurry up. It's annoying. Old Wu said impatiently. How heavy could a little girl be? He was not that old and not weak. He could definitely carry a child. Su Xiaolu nimbly climbed onto Old Wu's back and thanked him sweetly. Thank you, master. When you're old, I'll carry you too. Old Wu carried Su Xiaolu and walked forward steadily. Hearing Su Xiaolu's pleasant words, he snorted and said, You're not that old, but you're quite good at bragging. Su Xiaolu giggled. Old Wu could not help but smile. Perhaps it was because she had had a good life these past few years. The little girl really weighed quite heavy. She had to be more than 30 caddies. But this weight was not enough to tire a man like him. On the way, Su Xiaolu was afraid that Old Wu would be tired and suggested walking on her own. Old Wu ignored her until they saw the town. Only then did Old Wu put Su Xiaolu down to rest. Su Xiaolu quickly massaged his shoulders and back. Old Wu took out a water bottle and handed it to Su Xiaolu. Girl, drink some water first. Su Xiaolu shook her head. Master, I'm not thirsty. You can drink it. Old Wu did not drink either. After resting for a while, he brought Su Xiaolu into the city. After entering the city, Old Wu brought Su Xiaolu to the Sun residence. Su Xiaolu couldn't help but ask curiously, Master, are we going like this? Will the Sun residence not let us in? Su Xiaolu looked at Old Wu. Old Wu looked like an ordinary old man with a bad temper. Everyone in the world was looking for the divine doctor, but if he stood in front of them, they probably wouldn't recognize him. Su Xiaolu firmly believed in this. After all, Old Wu had lived in seclusion in Southern Mountain Village for many years. The villagers often looked for him for treatment. Everyone only felt that his medical skills were not bad. Old Wu looked at Su Xiaolu and said, Little girl, don't worry. Just watch. Old Wu kept her in suspense. He did it on purpose and did not tell Su Xiaolu. Su Xiaolu wanted to know more, but she could hold herself back and just follow the old man. When they arrived at the entrance of the Sun residence, Old Wu took out a letter and handed it to the servant guarding the door. Deliver this letter to your master. The servant saw the seal of the Sun residence on the envelope and respectfully took the letter. Sir, please wait a moment. With that, he hurried into the residence to report. Old Wu raised his head and puffed out his chest, proudly smoothing his gray beard. Su Xiaolu was puzzled again. Master, why do you have a recommendation letter? So he had a letter. But how did it come about? Su Xiaolu suddenly felt that her master had many secrets. Old Wu glanced at Su Xiaolu and said, Of course, it's the way of our Mingu. Those who want to seek treatment will send the letter to Mingu. In the end, the letter will reach me. They can't find me, so they can only wait for me to come. The little girl did not make a fuss, so Old Wu did not keep her hanging. In any case, he would pass it to her in the future. Su Xiaolu nodded. She understood after some thought, but she had a new question. She asked again, Master, won't some people die if they can't wait for you to save them? For example, serious illnesses and acute illnesses couldn't wait. 
what was the use of sending a letter to Mingu? Old Wu looked at Su Xiaolu and said with a smile, Girl, do you think everyone in the world is waiting for the divine doctor of Mingu to save them? There are many capable people in the world. If they can't even save their own lives, why bother finding a divine doctor? They might as well die and reincarnate early. The little girl was too naive. Su Xiaolu frowned. She looked at Old Wu and asked again, Master, what kind of person will you save? Old Wu knocked Su Xiaolu's head and said, You're not allowed to ask any more questions after this. Other than some important figures who are important to the country, saving people depends on my mood. If I want to save them, I'll save them. If I don't want to save them, then I don't save them. After saying that, Old Wu closed his eyes and rested. Chapter 97 Divine Doctor You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Su Xiaolu did not continue asking and thought about it. She naturally wanted to save many people in the future and earn a lot of money. Thinking of the promise she made that year, perhaps she would become the most unreliable divine doctor in Mingu's history. After all, she would save the wicked, the poor, the good, and most importantly, the rich. While she was thinking, footsteps came from the Sun residence. Su Xiaolu looked inside and saw a man in a dark green brocade robe. He was old and looked anxious. There was also an anxious dot looking middle the aged man and an equally anxious beautiful woman beside him. They hurriedly arrived outside the residence. The man in the lead bowed respectfully and said to Old Wu, Thank you for your help, sir. I, Sun Buqing, thank you in advance. Sun Buqing was the current head of the Sun residence. His only son, Sun Qian, and his daughter Dot and Law, Madame Lian, had a pair of twins, a boy and a girl. They were a rare pair of twins. However, premature birth and congenital weakness could not be cured with medicine. They were already six years old and often lay sick in bed. Sun Buqing was a businessman. He'd heard about Mingu from a friend and had tried to write a letter, but there had been no reply for six long years. They had already lost hope, but they did not expect to receive that letter today. Sun Buqing, who was discussing business with his son and daughter Dot and Dot Law, immediately staggered in excitement. They immediately ran out together, afraid that the divine doctor would leave. They were very sincere with old Wu. Sun Buqing took the lead to thank him. His son, Sun Zichen, and Madame Lian, also bowed and thanked him. Old Wu nodded indifferently and said indifferently, let me take a look first. Sun Buqing's face overflowed with excitement and joy. He nodded repeatedly and gestured for Old Wu and Su Xiaolu to enter the residence. They were also respectful to Su Xiaolu. When they entered the residence, Sun Zichen gently reminded her, be careful, young lady. Su Xiaolu was not as aloof as Old Wu. She smiled sweetly at Sun Zichen and said, thank you. Sun Zichen's gaze was gentle. He wanted to reach out and touch Su Xiaolu's hair, but he felt that it was too rude, so he held back. Madame Lian held Sun Zichen's arm and sighed softly. If only our Chen and Shan could be so healthy. Their children were already six years old, but they didn't look as old as Su Xiaolu. The two children always looked pale and had to be carefully taken care of at all times. Therefore, every time she saw a lively child, Madame Lian would sigh in her heart. Sun Zichen looked at Su Xiaolu and patted Madame Lian's hand gently. With the divine doctor of Mingu here, our child will be as good one day. Madame Lian sighed. It's all my fault, if it weren't for the fact that she wasn't strong enough, the two children wouldn't be weak in the womb. Sun Zichen frowned with heartache. He said sternly, my dear, you mustn't say that. I have never blamed you for this. I am only grateful. Madame Lian sighed. She had married a good husband, but she was so unlucky. Looking at the divine doctor walking in front of her, Madame Lian wished that the divine doctor could really cure her two children. Old Wu paid no attention to Sun Zichen and Madame Lian's whispers. Sun Buqing only sighed and said nothing. He had only married once, so when his son was only willing to marry only one person and refused to take concubines, he did not object. Su Xiaolu understood how important those two children were to the Sun residents. 
everything in the world was imperfect. It could only be said that everyone had their own misfortune. However, she could rest assured. As long as she could treat the young master and young lady of the Sun residence, it would not be difficult for her eldest brother and second brother to go to school. Su Xiaolu secretly clenched her fists to cheer herself on. Connate weakness could actually be made up for. However, that was in her previous life. After all, in her previous life, medical treatment was very advanced in that life. The premature babies lived in incubators as soon as they were born. There were also all kinds of nutrients that were continuously delivered, just like in the mother's womb. Here, there was naturally no such condition, so it was very difficult for the two children of the Sun residents to survive until now. When they arrived at the main hall, Sun Buqing said apologetically, Divine Doctor, I'm sorry. My grandchildren's bodies are weak. Please visit them after bathing. Their bodies are really weak and we can't take any risks. Yeah, Old Wu had no objections to this. Anyway, these Sun residents would prepare everything well. Su Xiaolu followed him obediently. She naturally had no objections as well. Soon, Old Wu and Su Xiaolu went to wash up. The maidservants were very considerate. From time to time, they would ask Su Xiaolu if she was hot or cold. Su Xiaolu was still a little awkward. She started to bathe on her own since she was four years old. However, in the Sun residence, looking at the full bucket of hot water and all kinds of cumbersome things, she didn't know how to use them, so she could only let the servant girl help her. As for Old Wu next door, he was much rougher. He shouted at the servant coldly, Everyone, get out. After taking a shower and changing into the clothes that the Sun residents had brought over, Su Xiaolu looked at her beautiful reflection in the bronze mirror. She could not help but hold her face and admire it. She was too good. Looking. Her mother, Madame Zhao, had a very gentle appearance and fair skin. Her father, Su Sanlang, was also quite handsome. He had more defined features and dark skin. Thinking of her eldest brother, second brother, and her third sister, Su Xiaolu felt that they mostly resembled Madame Zhao. You look lovely, my lady. The maidservant Qing Zhu could not help but praise her. Su Xiaolu's face was fair and red. Her eyebrows were delicate and her eyelashes were long. Her peach blossom eyes were beautiful and lively. Her nose was small and straight, and her mouth was pink. She was exquisite and beautiful. Su Xiaolu made a face in the bronze mirror. The maidservants were amused. They combed Su Xiaolu's hair. After combing her hair, Su Xiaolu looked even cuter. When she went out, Old Wu had been waiting for a long time. When he saw Su Xiaolu, he muttered, Women are troublesome. They're troublesome even at a young age. Sun Buqing and his family, who were waiting, were all surprised. This young lady was too beautiful and cute. She was fair and tender. They really wanted to hug her. But looking at the divine doctor with a long face, they could only dismiss the idea. Su Xiaolu ran to Old Wu's side and said with a smile, Master, you look so good. You look like a sage. After being praised, Old Wu's cold face softened. Su Xiaolu asked again, Master, do I look good? Old Wu glanced at Su Xiaolu and said, Isn't it the same as before? It's still that nose and eyes. They're always so good. Looking. It's just a shower, not a change of face. Old Wu was already uncomfortable after being praised in a roundabout way. He did not want to talk to Su Xiaolu anymore. He turned to Sun Buqing and said, Lead the way. Sun Buqing nodded in agreement and turned to lead the way. Chapter 98 Connate Weakling Twins you are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Su Xiaolu walked behind. Needless to say, the interior of the Sun residence was very pleasing to the eye. On a cold December day, several types of wintersweet blooming could be seen in the Sun residence. The faint plum fragrance mixed with the cold air was comforting. Su Xiaolu could not help but take a lot of glances. Madame Lian's eyes were always on Su Xiaolu, gentle and loving. She gently held the paper bag in her hand and finally couldn't help but tug at Su Xiaolu's clothes. 
Su Xialu stopped and turned to look at Madame Lian in confusion. Madame Lian smiled and reached out her hand to show Su Xialu the paper bag. She said gently, Are you hungry? Su Xialu understood that Madame Lian was feeding her. She sensed that Madame Lian liked her. Su Xialu took the paper bag and said sweetly, Thank you, Auntie. Madame Lian smiled, her eyes were red. She gently touched Su Xialu's hair and said, You're welcome. Eat. Su Xiaolu opened the paper bag. There were snacks inside. Each piece was only the size of a fingernail. Su Xiaolu picked up a small piece and ate it. The pastry was faintly sweet and melted in her mouth. It was delicious. Su Xiaolu ate all the way and finished it when they arrived. Madame Lian had been paying attention to Su Xiaolu. Seeing that Su Xiaolu had finished eating, she took the paper bag and handed it to the maidservant while she wiped Su Xiaolu's hands with her handkerchief. Madame Lian wiped Su Xiaolu's hands lovingly. The love in her eyes could not be hidden. Sun Buqing had already gone in with old Wu. Su Xiaolu was very grateful for Madame Lian's gentleness. She didn't have the heart to interrupt, but she still had serious matters to attend to. Su Xiaolu retracted her hand and said politely, Thank you, Auntie. I'll go in first. Madame Lian was puzzled. It doesn't matter if you don't go. Tell me what you like. Can I play with you? Madame Lian treated Su Xiaolu as a child. She felt that a child her age should love to play. Su Xiaolu said to Madame Lian seriously, Auntie, I have to take your children's pulse too. At this moment, Old Wu's voice came from inside the house. Xiaolu, come in. Madame Lian was a little surprised. Su Xiaolu smiled and went into the inner room. Seeing Su Xiaolu's small figure, Madame Lian came back to her senses and quickly followed her into the room. There were all kinds of wooden toys in the spacious room. The charcoal fire warmed the room without a hint of smoke. The inner room was divided into the left and right inner rooms, which were the beds of Sun Baoqian and Sun Baoshan respectively. Because Sun Baoshan's body was weaker, they went to see him first. Madame Lian was afraid that her daughter would feel uneasy, so she went to Sun Baoqian's inner room on the right. When Sun Baoshan saw Sun Buqing and Sun Zichian, he stood up from his desk and bowed. Grandpa, father. Then, he looked at old Wu and said politely, Greetings, sir. Sun Baoshan thought old Wu was the teacher. He was weak and did not have the chance to attend normal schools. His teachers were invited to the house. Sun Baoshan was very thin. His face was yellow and pale. His hair was also very yellow and thin. He couldn't even tie it up properly. Sun Buqing and Sun Zichian had already gone forward. Sean, this gentleman is a divine doctor. He's here to treat you. Sit down. Sun Zichian spoke gently to Sun Baoshan. Sun Buqing closed and put away the book on his desk. Sun Baoshan also sat down obediently. He looked at Old Wu quietly and finally his gaze landed on Su Xiaolu. When his eyes met Su Xiaolu's, he was stunned. Su Xiaolu smiled sweetly at him. Sun Baoshan also smiled and nodded. Sun Buqing and Sun Zichian had already retreated to the side and let Old Wu sit down to take Sun Baoshan's pulse. Sun Baoshan wanted to cough. He took a sip of water from the desk and put it down again. He held out his hand. It was thin, too, almost skeletal. Old Wu placed his hand on it with a solemn expression. Sun Buqing and Sun Zichian did not dare to say a word, but they waited anxiously for the results. It's congenital, but there are still many toxins in their bodies. I'm sure your wife took a lot of pregnancy medicine when she was pregnant including some powerful ones. Old Wu looked at Sun Zichian and said. Sun Zichian frowned and nodded. He said truthfully, indeed. When my wife was pregnant, she was unstable several times. It was very difficult for her to keep the children. Old Wu stood up and did not say anything else to Sun Zichian. Instead, he said to Su Xiaolu, girl, come and take a look. Sun Buqing and Sun Zichian were both shocked. They thought they had heard wrongly. 
However, Su Xiaolu was already sitting in the seat that old Wu had given up. She reached out her hand to take Sun Baoshan's pulse. After a while, old Wu asked Su Xiaolu in a heavy tone, can he be cured? Take a good look. He took his pulse. Sun Baoshan's condition was very difficult to treat, and it would take a long time. Moreover, their bodies were too weak and could not withstand many medicines. If they were not careful, they might die prematurely. It would not be a problem to prolong their lives for a period of time. If Su Xiaolu wanted to take a bet, the risk was too high. If Sun Baoshan died, the Sun residents might vent their anger on the Su family. He actually didn't recommend Su Xiaolu to treat him, so his tone was a little harsh. Su Xiaolu smiled at him and nodded. It can be cured, but it wouldn't be fast. It will take at least three to five years. She decided to treat him. Sun Baoshan's condition was bad, but he could be cured if he was properly nursed. As she took his pulse, she wondered how to treat him. With medicine and acupuncture, and some spiritual spring water to nourish his body, he would recover. Seeing that Su Xiaolu understood, Old Wu didn't say anything else. Su Xiaolu retracted her hand and blinked at the stunned Sun Baoshan. Sun Baoshan came back to his senses and lowered his eyes in embarrassment. He felt his cheeks burning. He felt that Su Xiaolu was really good at looking, just like the immortals in books. Her smile made Sun Baoshan feel a strange emotion in his heart, as if something had flown into his heart. When Sun Buqing and Sun Zichen heard this, they found it difficult to control their excitement. Sun Buqing was so excited that his eyes turned red. He looked at old Wu and said agitatedly, Sir, please save my grandchildren's lives. The Sun residence is willing to pay any price. Sun Zichen also showed his sincerity. Sir, if you have any requests, just ask. Even if I can't do it, I will think of a way. Please save my son and daughter. Old Wu did not look at Sun Buqing and Sun Zichen. Instead, he said to Su Xiaolu, Girl, you name the price. I'll supplement it later. Su Xiaolu knew that Old Wu was doing this for her own good. She nodded obediently, then looked at Sun Buqing and Sun Zichen seriously and said, I can save them. My request is for 10,000 tails of silver to properly resolve the matter of my eldest brother and second brother, enrolling in the school. I also want you to promise that as long as the Sun residence is in Goathorn Town, you will protect my family. Chapter 99 Her Conditions You are listening to the novel at FameTV.com. These were Su Xiaolu's conditions. She had stated them very clearly. Sun Buqing and Sun Zichen listened quietly. They looked at Su Xiaolu and finally stopped treating her like a child. Just as they were about to agree, Su Xiaolu said, I'm sure you know that his body is very weak. I don't think anyone in this world can guarantee that he won't die. I can only promise that I will do my best to treat him, but his body is really too weak. If he can't survive this, you can't vent your anger on my family. Of course, Su Xiaolu had also considered what Old Wu had considered. Sun Buqing and Sun Zichen had already calmed down. They did not answer Su Xiaolu immediately. Su Xiaolu did not ask further. Instead, she said, you can think about it first. After all, treatment is a long not term thing. It will take at least three years for his condition to improve. It will take at least five years for him to recover. So, you don't have to worry about spending the next few days thinking about it. Let me go and see the other one first. With that, Su Xiaolu walked out. Old Wu was very satisfied with Su Xiaolu's performance. He smiled and followed behind her. Sun Zichen was a little confused. He looked at Sun Buqing and asked, Father, what should we do? Sun Buqing also had his own considerations. The Sun family did not have many children. Now, Sun Zichen was his only son. Sun Zichen was deeply in love with Madame Lian and naturally refused to take concubines. If Sun Baoshan could not recover, the Sun family would be done for. He wasn't sure how to respond. He looked at the hopeful Sun Baoshan. Sun Buqing sighed and said, let's go over and see Chen's condition first. 
Sun Baoshan's health was deteriorating year by year. This year, he didn't even go out. He was also obedient and drank medicine whenever he was told to. If he couldn't go out, he would read at home. Sun Baoshan was very smart. If he was in good health, he would definitely be able to take the scholarly examination if he continued studying. Unfortunately, the heavens were not willing. Who would have thought that the Sun family were military officials two generations earlier? Sun Buqing sighed and went out. Sun Zichen gently stroked Sun Baoshan's hair and said, Sean, rest well. I'll go and see your sister. Sun Baoshan nodded obediently. Go ahead, father. Don't worry about me. I'll be obedient. Sun Zichen turned and went out. Sun Baoshan looked at Sun Zichen's back and lowered his eyes. His gaze fell on his thin wrist and he smiled as he thought about the touch. If only he could really be cured. Inside the inner room on the right. Sun Baoqian had already sat down obediently and was waiting. When Su Xiaolu and Old Wu came in, Sun Baoqian stood up politely and bowed. Greetings, doctor. Greetings, young doctor. Old Wu made a faint sound of agreement. This was the first time Su Xiaolu had been called a doctor. She smiled at Sun Baoqian. Old Wu took Sun Baoqian's pulse first. He pondered for a moment before saying, her condition is better than the previous one. Their symptoms are the same. When Madame Lien heard this, she looked anxious. She was about to ask how she could be cured, but before she could ask, Su Xiaolu sat down and took her pulse again. Su Xiaolu's conclusion was the same as old Wu's. She retracted her hand and said, it can be treated. It's the same as before. I've already mentioned the conditions. You can consider it carefully and not be in a hurry to give an answer. Su Xiaolu said to Sun Buqing and Sun Zichen. Madame Lian was confused. She looked at Sun Zichen in confusion and asked him what was going on. Sun Zichen gave Madame Lian a look to tell her not to be anxious. Sun Buqing looked at Su Xiaolu and said, May I ask who will treat my grandson? To be honest, Sun Buqing did not trust Su Xiaolu. After all, she was a child. Su Xiaolu's conditions were easy for the Sun residents to fulfill. The only thing they were worried about was that she couldn't cure the children. The more hope they had, the more they could not bear to fail. Sun Zichen also looked worried. Although Madame Lian wasn't sure what had just happened, she had her own judgment. Coupled with the fact that Su Xiaolu had just checked Sun Baoqian's pulse, she had a guess. Her gaze landed on Su Xiaolu. No matter how she looked at it, it was unbelievable. She swallowed and wanted to speak several times, but she didn't. She held back her questions and waited for Old Wu to speak to Su Xiaolu. Old Wu said very naturally, of course, my disciple will. If you're worried, my disciple can perform acupuncture for you first. You can personally feel her ability. Anyway, there's still a long way to go. I think Madame Sun's body is also weak. Why don't you let her try? He had never doubted Su Xiaolu's ability. If he had studied hard all his life, then Su Xiaolu was talented from the start. And talent could not be obtained even if one worked hard. Those without talent can spend an entire lifetime learning but still be unable to understand, while those with talent could do it easily, and Su Xiaolu was one of the latter. Whether it was acupuncture or the taking of the pulse, if she said she was the second best, no one would dare to claim to be the best. After all, Mingu Medical Valley was number one, and he was the only successor of Mingu. He now recognized Su Xiaolu as the best. If Su Xiaolu was second best, he could only fall behind. But Su Xiaolu was young, so it was normal for them not to believe her. It's fine if they don't believe her. They can just see for themselves. When Old Wu casually said this, Sun Buqing looked at Madame Lian. Madame Lian naturally did not hesitate to agree. Sun Zichen pulled her back and said, Doctor, let me try. Sun Zichen did not want Madame Lian to take the risk. Madame Lian had been in poor health ever since she gave birth to Sun Baoshan and Sun Baoqian. Her medicinal cuisine had not stopped for the past few years. 
In the past, she had eaten wild animals sent by a family and got much better. Unfortunately, that family had been seriously injured and stopped hunting. Originally, there would have been some livestock that was also very good, but they refused to sell them last year. Sun Zichen did not want his wife and children to take the risk when it came to dangerous matters, so he was most suitable. Then let my disciple take your pulse. As for who from the Sun family would try, Old Wu didn't care. The outcome would be the same anyway. Sun Bao Qian stood up and Madame Lian led her to the bed to lie down. Sun Zichen sat down. He reached out and looked at Su Xiaolu gently. In his eyes, Su Xiaolu was still a child. If he was too serious, he might put pressure on her. Su Xiaolu cherished every kindness. She also smiled at Sun Zichen and then began to take his pulse. She quietly felt Sun Zichen's pulse. After a while, she retracted her hand and said, Your pulse is also lacking. You should also have a sickly constitution. There's nothing wrong with it, but you're more prone to getting sick than most people. Sun Zichen was stunned. Su Xiaolu was right. He was indeed prone to illness when he was young. There was nothing wrong with his body, but he was just more prone to illness than others. Over the years, he had seen many famous doctors who had also said the same thing. Chapter 100 Ancestral Weakness 1 You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. If these words were said by the divine doctor, Sun Zichen would not be surprised at all, because he felt that the divine doctor's ability was definitely superior. But these words came from a little girl who looked only four or five years old. Forgive his ignorant surprise. Am I wrong? I don't think so. Your pulse shows these conditions. Sun Zichen did not speak for a long time. Su Xiaolu could not help but speak up. She had to be right. She looked at Sun Zichen and saw his shocked expression. Su Xiaolu was relieved. He was too surprised. Sun Zichen came back to his senses and nodded repeatedly. You're right. My body is like this. Not only me, but my father is the same. Sun Zichan looked at Su Xiaolu with a different kind of respect. Sun Buqing also said, that's indeed the case. Even my father is the same. This is the weakness passed down from his ancestors. It's not a serious illness. Other than being prone to illness, it has no effect. That was the ancestral weakness. However, Su Xiaolu said, although it's far away, I can say with certainty that although it's not a serious illness, it's some kind of residual poison that remains in the body and destroys it. That's why it makes you prone to illness and will affect children. Sun Zichen frowned and looked involuntarily at his father. Sun Buqing looked at Su Xiaolu thoughtfully. Old Wu was also a little surprised. He went forward and grabbed Sun Zichen's hand to take his pulse. Then, he said, girl, you surprised me. I can't reach your level. Su Xiaolu was also pleased to be praised. Her senses were stronger than most people's, which was probably why she had the space. Sun Buqing sighed and said, little doctor's ability amazed me. Among the Sun family's ancestors, my grandfather was actually a military officer. At that time, the Sun family was prosperous, and he was a general who served the country. One year, in a fierce battle, all the men of the Sun family died on the battlefield. My grandfather blocked a poisonous arrow to save the late emperor. Later, he recovered and retired to the business world. When my father was born, his body was weak and he was often sick. Later on, I was the same. Then, my son Zichen was the same, as for the lack of children, that was indeed the case. The Sun family's military officer was born with a simple family background and only had one wife. He married someone he liked and did not want to take concubines. He only wanted to spend the rest of his life with his wife. The matter of childbirth was originally the will of the heavens, and it was difficult to conceive. His wife had once been pregnant again after giving birth to a son, but she had a miscarriage after three months. In Sun Zichen's generation, Madame Lian was pregnant with twins. She had miscarried the previous two times. 
Only Sun Bao Qian and Sun Bao Shan were born after they used some powerful medicine to protect them. Sun Bucheng suddenly paused. Si Da could it be, he did not finish his sentence. He only looked at Madame Lian apologetically and said, I'm sorry. The possibility that Sun Buqing could think of had also occurred to Sun Zichen. Naturally, Madame Lian had also thought of it. She was heartbroken, but that was all in the past. There was no point in thinking about it anymore. Sun Zichen also looked at Madame Lian guiltily. It turned out that the Sun family's lack of children was because they had poison in their bodies. Not only would they pass it on to their children, but they would also make their children innately weak. He thought about how Madame Lien had been pregnant a few times and her originally healthy body had been destroyed by the miscarriages. In the end, she was even more exhausted by the medicine that they used to keep the children. Sun Zichen blamed himself. He looked at Su Xiaolu and bent down. He said sincerely, please treat my family. No matter what the outcome is, I swear to the heavens that I will never hate you. If I break the oath, I will not be able to live in peace after I die. Sun Zichian no longer had any doubts about Su Xiaolu's ability. If Su Xiaolu could not cure them, then no one in this world could. They had looked forward to this opportunity for years. How could they miss it now? Maybe it wouldn't end well, but would it end well if they didn't try? The truth was there, and even if it can't be cured, his son and daughter wouldn't last more than a few years. If they had to vent their anger because of this, then what was the point of all the good deeds that the Sun family had done in the past? Sun Buqing sighed and said, we're willing to treat him. No matter what the outcome is, we definitely won't blame anyone. As long as our Sun family is still here, as long as there's still one person in our Sun family, we'll keep our word. Sun Buqing had never thought that the reason why the Sun family's descendants were weak was because of themselves. However, it had been several generations. If the divine doctor hadn't found out, who would have known? Thinking of his deceased wife, Sun Buqing only felt guilty. The debt he owed his wife could only be made up in his next life. Now, he could only pray that the heavens would take pity on him and allow his grandchildren to be cured. As members of the Sun family, it had been hard on them. As long as there was a chance, the Sun family was willing to do their best. A verbal agreement doesn't count. It's better to have a written agreement. If you go back on your word and bully my disciples' family in the future, my Mingu faction will pursue the matter to the end. Even if you die, there are still graves and bones. My sect has many friends. There are many ways. Old Wu stroked his beard meaningfully and said. It was expected that the Sun residents would agree. However, the written agreement could not be omitted. Su Xiaolu looked at him and thanked him silently. It seemed her master still had many secrets she did not know. But it didn't matter. She was the successor of Mingu Medical Valley. One day, she would know all of the master's secrets. Since Old Wu had already said so, Sun Buqing and his son were also straightforward. They immediately went to prepare the documents. After Sun Zichen left, he even begged Su Xiaolu to take Madame Lian's pulse. Su Xiaolu agreed, so after Sun Buqing and his son went out, Su Xiaolu took Madame Lian's pulse. Madame Lian's body was also very weak. It was all right to have constant nourishment, but she was also prone to getting sick. It was difficult to recover from illnesses. Therefore, medicinal soup was indispensable every day. Old Wu sat to one side with his eyes closed. Sun Bao Qian got up from the bed and sat beside Madame Lian worriedly. After taking her pulse, Su Xiaolu said, Auntie's body is a little depleted, but because she has been taking medicine for many years, it's hard for her to take medicine. Her body is weak because she has accumulated some poison, and she gets sick easily. It's not difficult. As long as the poison is cleared and she makes up for it according to her needs, she will be fine. Sun Bao Qian said softly, it's been hard on you. If it weren't for me and my brother, mother wouldn't be like this. Sun Bao Qian was very sensible. Thinking that Madame Lian's health was bad because of her, she felt guilty. Madame Lian gently held Sun Bao Qian's hand and looked at her with heartache. She said gently, Qian, you're talking nonsense again. 
You and Sean are my babies. I forced you to stay. Why would I blame you? As long as you don't blame me for not giving you healthy bodies, I'm satisfied.